I'm Steve and this is This Week with Cars. This may look like a typical Nissan Pulsar, or as they're called here in North America, the Datsun 310, but that's not what this is. This is actually a rare car from a company called Lectra Motors. This is a fully electric car created by Al Sawyers and his company Lectra Motors. What we're looking at here is a Datsun 310 that was modified at the factory in Las Vegas by the Lectra Motor Company in 1981. Unlike most electric cars from this period, this was a real car. This wasn't some small, a flimsy car with an electric motor in it. This is a real car. They even had things such as heaters and air conditioning, all the creature comforts that you would expect in a real car. So let's take a look at it. Besides the badges on the outside of the car, you wouldn't know that this is an electric car or different than any other Nissan. There's no indications that it's an electric car. If you had seen one of these parked in a parking lot in the 80s, you might not have thought anything of it at all. Around here on the back, you can see this battery tray down here, and there's no exhaust coming out of the back of the car. That's really the only indication, besides the badges on the car, that this is an electric car. I believe that originally this car would have had the charging port here and the gas filler. But this car has been modified a bit over the years. This car actually has 20,000 miles on it and someone's done a lot of work to keep it on the road. If you open the doors, there are Lectra motor badges here on the door cells. Unfortunately, the interior of this car is a little tattered. Someone has installed these aftermarket amp and volt gauges. These would not be original to the car, but back behind there, you can see the original gauges. I'm not sure what this one is yet. Not sure if this is an amp meter or a volt meter. Since it goes both directions, I think it's an amp meter. We'll find out more about the function of this gauge if we can get the car to run. To the right of it is a big amp meter gauge that goes up to 700 amps. On the other side of that is the original Nissan speedometer and then a volt meter that even has Electra motors embossed in it. Underneath the Hood, you we find that the engine compartment is completely filled with batteries. There is a DC motor located right down there and that is bolted up to the original transmission. This car still has a four-speed manual transmission. Besides the battery in here we can see the voltage controller for the motor. I believe that this has been replaced at one point. We have a 128 volt DC to 12 volt DC converter an emergency circuit breaker, as well as some fuse panels. Underneath the hood of the car, some maintenance that has been done to the car. Looks like new batteries in 1990, and the last time it was modified, maybe 1998. Let's check out the rear of the car. The floor under the rear hatch consists mostly of a large battery cover. And underneath this battery cover, so it's a whole lot more batteries. There are 18 deep cycle golf cart batteries in total in this car, plus one 12 volt battery to run all of the car's original equipment electronics. As you would expect with an electric car that looks like this, when I turn the key, the car does nothing. So I'm gonna start right here. This is a 12 volt battery that powers all of the car's original equipment, which would include everything that wasn't modified to make it an electric car. So that would be the headlights, the taillights, probably the fan blower, other things like that. So let's get this battery disconnected and put some power on these terminals and see what happens inside the car. These batteries have so much acid that's come out on top of them, but you can read that this was the plus, this was the minus. So this is kind of interesting, but all this bracketry is covered with some sort of insulating material. It looks and feels like it's a really thick primer. I'm not sure what it is, but it must electrically insulate the brackets. I'll set my jump pack in here. So this wire was the positive side, and this wire was the negative side. Woo! Okay, we got a spark there. So something must have been turned on with the jump pack hooked up. See if anything works. OK, 
Okay, there's some chime going off in here. But that might be the door sensor. Yeah, it's in the key. Okay, so I heard a big solenoid clicking or something. And uh, sounds like the vacuum pump is running. There's an electric vacuum pump on these cars so that you get things like power brake boost and might be other things hooked up to that, but I think that's what that noise is. Let's see if the lights work. Oh, look at that. On that gauge there, I just saw that moving for a second. But then the pump stopped. Oh, pump's moving. So what we've got over here, this might be the ammeter for the 12 volt system. And then this gauge or the ammeter behind it is probably the ammeter for the electric motor. Let's see what else we have here. All right, wipers work. Let's try the radio. Turns on, yeah. Might work if we were outside. Let's see. Fan works. Let's see what's in the ashtray. Of course, being an electric car, it's going to have some electrical tape in it. That vacuum pump must build up pressure and then stops once the pressure's built up. We'll learn more about that later. Okay, so had good batteries, maybe this thing would drive. I'm pretty confident that we have most of the 12 volt stuff working. So now let's take a look at the electrical system for the propulsion. Now this is the big dilemma. This would cost $3,000 just to replace all the batteries in this car. And that would give me 108 volts to send to the motor for propulsion. But if I did that, how am I even going to charge 108 volts worth of six volt batteries. The common vehicles today that would use this type of battery would be electric forklifts and those usually run at about 72 volts at the most. So maybe it makes sense to run this car at 72 volts. Obviously you probably won't get as much speed out of it and definitely not as much range. But do I even want to spend the money to get up to 72 volts before I know it runs? So I'm not sure what I'm going to do here, except that I do know the one thing I want to do first, all these batteries are connected in series, by the way. So there should be two wires running from the front to the back somewhere. And I think I should just eliminate all the batteries that are in the back for now and concentrate on the front of the car. So we have 11 of our batteries back here. This is a huge amount of our range, but we have two main wires that run in, this one right here and that one right there. So I need to disconnect both of those wires and then connect the two together and that would bypass all these batteries. If I was to put new batteries in the front and leave these connected, these are most likely shorted out and they're just gonna draw voltage from my good battery. So I need to bypass all of these right now because right now I don't plan on replacing these. First I need to get that wire disconnected and this wire disconnected and connect the two together somehow. Okay, now that the two wires are connected together, I'm gonna to take a good amount of tape and tape these up so that they are not going to short out on anything. Again, all of this is just temporary until we can find out if the car moves. Okay, so here's what we have going on here. This is the power running to the motor controller right here that is hooked up to this device right here this has a trigger that's inside the car in case something goes wrong this will cut all power to the electric motor now on the other side of this is our wires that ran to the back 
So this is one of the wires that ran to the back and this starts our loop of power. This wire goes to the back, runs through all of those batteries, and then the power comes up here. And then this loops through all the batteries up here, all the way over to here where we have another fuse. So our two endpoints are right here and right here. I just need to disconnect this end and this end. And then all of these batteries are bypassed. Once we have these disconnected, if we want to test the car, all we need to do is hook up a positive DC voltage here and a negative DC voltage here. So this has me thinking of an idea. What if I didn't even replace these batteries? To test this, what if I just hooked up all the jump packs that I can find? The jump packs are 12 volts, so they're gonna build voltage much quicker than the six volt batteries. And I might have enough voltage here just in jump packs in order to test this. I can hook my positive lead for a jump pack here, chain them all together, and then hook the negative up here. So let's go grab those, see how many I can come up with, and I will need one over there to run the rest of the car as well. Here's one jump pack to run the car. Okay, I found five jump packs. I'm gonna hook four of these up in series, and then the fifth one I'm going to use to power the original equipment on the car. So let's loop these together and see what happens. I'll be wanting to put the positive and negatives together. So with these four battery packs, let's see what voltage we've gotten up to. Okay, we have 50 volts. I think this is enough to see uh, if the car will move under 50 volts of power or not. So last one I'll connect right here. There was no sparks. That was a little scary. So the good news is this car still has a manual transmission. That means I can leave it in neutral. I don't have any fear that the car is actually going to move, but we can test the motor. So let's turn it on and uh, let's hit the throttle, see what happens. Nothing. Whoa, we got some smoke coming out up there. Let's go look at that. Not sure where that smoke was coming from, but definitely smelled electrical. These wires right here are hot, those terminals. This is the 12 volt fuels panel, so something was drawing a lot of power on the 12 volt side. Okay, so let's see what voltage we have here. Okay, we have 50 volts there. These are getting hot. These are our 12 volt circuits. Something's... That one right there, this one right here is drawing a lot of power. Whatever that one is hooked up to. Yep. So it looks like we have a corroded terminal there. I don't know if you can see this, but the solenoid right here moves. That does turn on the vacuum pump. So we are getting 50 volts to the voltage controller. disconnect the power for a second. Looks like these two wires here come from our potentiometer for our throttle position. Let's 
see if this works at all. Now let's move the throttle position, see if this changes. Okay, we went from right there we have 2.7 kilo ohms. If I start bringing that back, you can see that the resistance is changing. So it looks like the throttle position potentiometer is still working. This other wire I'm suspecting is probably a power wire to tell it to turn on. See if we have any voltage. I don't have any schematics for this car, so I'm just figuring out as I'm going along. You can't see this, but none of these terminals on the back of this motor controller are labeled. So this thing is a Curtis PMC model 1231C-8601. It says here operating voltage is 96 volts to 144 volts. So maybe we don't have enough voltage to make it work, not sure. But I think I need to figure out what that other wire that runs into it is. So need to see if I can find a user's manual for this. Let me go check the internet real quick. All right, I just went and looked on the internet. And luckily, you can still get these controllers. This top pin is the pin that activates the controller. So we need to put a positive on there. That should be on switched power. So let's see where this goes. Is this loop back? Those are old ties, barely took anything to break those. So it looks like that wire runs into the main harness. I'm not sure where it goes from there. So I think I'll just disconnect it. I'll grab my jumper wire and I'll just jump from here to here to turn the controller on. We'll see what happens. So I'm gonna turn the power back on. Connect this lead down here at the controller. Okay. I don't see any lights or anything to indicate that it's on. Now I'll reconnect the power. Nothing smoking. Let's move the throttle a little. Okay, I'm hearing something click up here. Okay, so let's disconnect the power again. Like that up. And I think we're still not sure if this works. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't put any LEDs on it to indicate that it's even powered on. We do have 50 volts being supplied to it. Why do we have 50 volts there? Let's disconnect this. Still 50 volts. Okay, we actually have 50 volts being output to the motor right now. So this thing should be spinning full speed. Okay, we have 50 volts on both of the terminals to the motor. So I'm a little confused about that. I'm gonna put a new fuse in the DC to DC converter. See what happens. This one, uh, by the way, has an LED light in it. So if this one breaks and it has power, then it'll actually 
light up and let us know that it has popped. Okay, seems good right now. Let's turn the power on. Still looks good. Pick up our power. And the light comes on. So it must be converting our power to charge up our 12 volt system. Fortunately, that's still not what was wrong. I need to take a better look at what's going on here. So I might as well just get these two batteries at least out of the way so that I can actually see the motor, uh, easily check what's going on here. It looks like I've got 50 volts on both of the terminals on the motor. Obviously, you need a potential difference for the motor to run. I'm going to put a new battery in here to run the original car stuff. That way I don't have to tie up a jump pack for this anymore. And at least I know that the original parts of the car are going to work every time. One thing I couldn't see before is there is two little wires right here that run up from the motor. Not sure what that does. And then we can see this side here would be the positive side of the DC feed to the motor, and this is the negative side. So it looks like the voltage controller is supposed to be supplying a negative DC circuit down to the motor. All right, this time I've looped in two more batteries. One is the jump pack that I used to have connected over there and my tow truck is right next to this car, so I tied in the batteries from the tow truck as well. So now, we're up to 70, 75 volts. I'm not gonna tie in those wires over there quite yet. I'm not sure the ones that were connected to 6, 12, 18 volts. Not sure what to do with them or if they're needed. Again, I'm going to try manually turning on the motor controller and it probably wants voltage from the battery direct so I can actually power that off of this terminal right here which is our battery plus the car is still in neutral okay now I can connect the We can actually see our vacuum pump now. It was located down there under the third battery. Okay, everything's turned on. Let's give it a little throttle, see if anything happens. Oh, I can hear the motor. Did you hear that? The motor's actually running this time. So I don't know if we didn't have enough voltage before. Maybe I needed to activate this with more but this is definitely running. So I think next thing to do is just put it in gear and see if it moves. I won't be able to move too far because I'm tied up with all of these wires everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect this pressure sensor so that the compressor is not running all the time. We don't need uh, the brake booster at this time. Okay, the key's already on. I'm gonna put it into first gear. Shouldn't need the clutch. I'll just give it a little bit. Throttle. Ooh. There we go. I think the brakes were stuck. It's moving. I'm not sure how far I can move. Let's try it reverse. See if we can go backwards. I 
Better not push it too much. Not sure how my tether's doing out there. I'm gonna get all this cleaned up now, get my jump packs out of here. I'm gonna pull these four batteries out and I'm gonna take all the batteries out of the trunk. I'll get new batteries in here and let's see what happens. I have all 11 batteries in the back of the car replaced. All the batteries that were in the car were eight volt, but this car originally used six volts and these six volts have about 70 more amp hours. So I should get a lot more range going back to using six volts over the eight volts that were in the car when I got it. And the seven batteries in the front that provide power as well as the one battery that runs everything that was original to the car have all been replaced. So now I'm ready to see if the Electra will move under its own power without being tethered to something. All right, first drive for me in the Electra Motors car. Maybe the first drive for anyone in one of these in a really long time. Let's see what happens. And we're moving. wonder if it has any engine braking. No, it does not slow down. It just keeps coasting. So I will need to get the brakes working on this before I try to go too fast in it. Let's see, the speedometer's working. Boy, that is a strange sound coming from the front of the thing. See right now we're using about 10 amps. Wow, that's pretty fast. All right, let's floor it. Whoa. It has pickup off the line that you wouldn't really expect, especially since it doesn't make any noise ahead of time. I just noticed here on the dashboard written on this duct tape, it's really hard to see. What does that say? It's that, I think it's something, something max, but here it says 20 mile per hour in first gear, 40 mile per hour second, 60 in third, and 80 mile per hour in fourth gear. I did kind of notice that the motor seems to reach some kind of rev limiter, and then you need to switch over to the other gear because you're not accelerating any further. Well, that's all I have time for, for my 1981 Lectra 2 Plus 2. This is a very rare car built in conjunction with the Department of Energy. Let me know if you want to see me continue restoring this car and if you want to see future videos on the Lectra and the Lectra Motor Company. This is the first Lectra car that I've ever bought and I really enjoyed making this video for you. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.